Hello everyone and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology. Um, today in our discussion we're going to talk about what you will expect on your very first lab practical. So the procedures and the hints and the clues and all the things that I'm giving you in this discussion here today will be everything that you will need to expect and what you can mentally prepare yourself for when you come and take a Anatomy and Physiology lab practical with me. So when you walk into the lab, although this lab no longer looks like this, it's been renovated, this is pretty much what you're going to see. You're going to see the models that we have worked with, the pictures that we've looked at online, your supplemental laboratory information, the pictures that are in your lab book, models that we have in class, microscope pictures that you've seen in class, all of the stuff that you've been looking at for the previous two or three weeks before the lab practical will all be set out on tables and there will be questions accompanying them. So this is what you're going to walk into lab to find. When you come into the lab, you are no longer able to confer with one another. You're no longer able to talk out loud to yourself. Everything needs to be fully mental. So there's no talking. Your backpacks, purses, cell phones, make sure all of your electronic devices are on silent, um, but you need to put them on the floor along the wall or along the um, lab benches across on the sides of the room. You just wanna make sure that your backpacks, purses, and all those things aren't in the middle of the labs because you're gonna be moving around. So you won't be just seated in your normal lab position or where you normally sit for lab. You're gonna actually be moving from one station to the next. So make sure that everything is put away. The only thing that you'll need to have in your hand is a pen or a pencil and I recommend having a pencil. I'm going to give you an answer sheet and um, depending on whether or not I can find enough clipboards for all of this you may get a clipboard on that answer with the answer sheet attached to it. So clipboard kind of an optional thing but you'll definitely have an answer sheet. Your answer sheet is going to have 50 blanks on it. All of your lab exams are going to consist of approximately 25 stations with two questions at each station and um, what you will answer that off of or be basically a large fill in the blank test because the sheet of paper that I'm gonna give you is completely blank. And I have shown that to you in class. So if you have not seen that paper, um, please ask one of your, your table meets what it looks like. And then you will commence taking the exam um, and filling out that blank sheet of paper. So where do you start? You're gonna to go to the first open spot. So if you like to be at number one, then you would go to the station where number one and two are found. Um, if you wanna start at the end, then you would go to the station where number 50 is found. Wherever you begin, make sure that you start with that particular question on your answer sheet. So if you start at number 15, um, make sure that you write down on your answer sheet that is the answer response for number 15. Don't start it at number one. So be very mindful in where you're beginning. You want to protect your answers and you do not want to crowd your fellow practical takers. So each of your stations is timed so crowding won't really be an issue until at the end of your lab practical. Um, each of your stations you'll have one minute at each station. It may seem like that's really short but if you've been really practicing and studying which I know you all have um, prior to taking the lab practical a minute's going to seem like forever. It's going to seem like forever for that time to tick down. So you get one minute initially to go through the station. You want to keep your answers close to your chest. Don't let people that are, are beside you or, or passing by you um, get a chance to look at those answers that you've worked really hard for. So what I actually have students do is you'll take your paper and you'll fold it longwise in half so that your answers are facing each other. And when you're not writing on your paper, then you should have your paper folded in half so that um, people can't see what your answers are. So. Although you only get one minute at each station, we all go through every station one time. And then at the very end of the lab practical, if you need to go back and look at something, then I will allow the class 15 minutes to go back to another station. And that is only happening after the practical is finished. So sometimes stations tend to get backed up and they can get a little crowded during this 15 minute go back and have a look session. Um, if that is the case, then what you wanna do is make sure that you give the individual that's actually answering the question at the station, give them an ATM-like distance. So just like you wouldn't crowd somebody out of there at the ATM, it's kind of rude to be right there breathing down their neck, um, give people a little bit of distance. And then once they finish and moved on, then by all means, um, please use the station and we'll expect for your fellow test takers to give you the same respect. So this is going to be what your models will be labeled like. So um, you'll have labels. So for this particular model, I might say um, in question 4A, name this anatomical adjective and you would give me optic um, so 
And same thing with 4B, name this anatomical adjective. So I won't just put the tape there and not ask you for something. Um, I typically will ask you what it is specifically I want you to write down in response to that. So examples of other questions could be, what is this organ that's labeled and to what organ system does it belong? So um, that would be a question for both 10A and 11A. What is this organ? or organs and to what organ system do they belong. So that's another example of how I would give you questions for your lab practical. And this information is just found and picked up straight off your syllabus. We have four lab exams, each is worth 100 points. You'll have 50 questions on each of your lab exams and each one of those is worth two points. Because of the nature of our labs and how they are used so frequently throughout the day and there's so much um, that goes into putting in a lab practical, there aren't any lab exam makeup. So that's just departmental policy because we found that it makes it very difficult for students um, as well as for the, the to get the accommodations met in the room um, to be able to have a makeup lab exam. So it's really not fair to give one student a makeup lab exam um, and then the entire room is taken up for 50 minutes when there can be a class going on at that time to facilitate 25 students. So there aren't any lab exam makeups. If you aren't for sure, something is better than nothing. So I do give partial credit for minor misspellings. So if you transpose an I for an E or forget an S, um, I usually don't make a big deal out of that. Um, if you, if it's pretty misspelled, um, I will take one point off of that. So if you can't remember how to spell subscapularis, um, but you know it's a subscapularis, then um, if you spell it out as best as you can and it's still pretty badly spelled incorrectly, then I will give you one point for that. If I can't figure out what your writing says and your answer is considered incorrect, I have to grade um, 50 of these lab practicals and they all have to be hand graded because they're all fill in the blank. So I don't really have time to try to figure out exactly what it is you're saying. So if I can't read your writing um, and I can't figure out what's going on that's why I suggest you write in pencil, then that answer is incorrect. The correct spelling for the terms for the lab practical are found in our virtual lab book. So sometimes the textbook and the lab book, they don't always use the same terms or spellings. So to make sure that everything is uniform, then I will be taking the um, lab manual's term and spelling. So your four lab practicals are of equal value. Practical grades are not curved. Nothing in this class is curved. Um, none of your lab grades are dropped. That's different from the lecture portion. Um, partial credit for minor misspelled words, once again, at my discretion. And once again, if I cannot read your answer, then it will be marked incorrect. So what's fair game? What would you, what's fair game to be on a lab practical? Anything posted on Blackboard, presented in selected figures from your textbooks, written in your lab manual, manual that's all fair game for a lab practical. Particularly, if it isn't in your lab book or a figure from your text corresponding to items in your lab book, then it's not on the practical. So if there's something that's like really cool on the visual a and book, and I think some of you guys have the um, a compliment, um, it's not Grey's Anatomy, but there's a, um, an atlas that came with your textbook. Um, there's some really cool images in there. I don't think I've used any of them on our supplemental laboratory information that's posted on Blackboard. I don't think any of it is posted in your virtual lab book that's posted on Blackboard. So don't worry about those items. So I'm only going to test you on information that's in your lab book and that information corresponds directly with what's in your textbook, which corresponds with what I put on Blackboard in your supplemental lab book. So those, all three of those places are gonna always match each other. Now for the correct way to spell these items, remember, take it out of your lab book. Big take home message is that if it's in your lab book, it's fair game for a practical question because I build all of these external supplemental lab resources off of what's in your lab book. So lab book, lab book, lab book is what we always go from. That is what I will be pulling your exams from. So I rarely say this, but I'm gonna say this during this particular time. Don't ask me. I don't answer any questions regarding whether or not a response is correct during your practical or your test. Students will sometimes have the inclination, they're not really sure if this is the right answer, they're a little bit nervous, so they'll bring it up to me and say, is this correct? And I'm gonna just be mum. And it's really hard for me to do, but I'm gonna be mum. 
don't ask me whether a question is correct because it's not really fair to the rest of your classmates for me to say, yeah, that one's right. Oh, no, that one's wrong because it's I didn't do that for everyone else in the class. So don't ask me if an answer is right while you're taking a practical or a test. Um, I do give you guys practice practicals that are out there. And if you have questions about that, you're always more than welcome to ask me um, during my office hours or via email. And remember, failure to prepare in your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. So if you really want to know whether or not this tissue is simple squamous epithelium from lung tissue or if it's adipose tissue, because they sometimes look a little similar, then you want to ask me that something, that something like that during lab time or during office hours. A practical way to focus your efforts. Remember, if it's not in the lab book, then it's not on the lab practical. So to succeed in your lab practical, show up, work in lab, know the lab book, and the pictures that are in your lab book are essentially the figures that are from your textbook. Um, the pictures that are in the supplemental laboratory are pictures that correspond to directly to um, items that are listed in your lab book. So the supplemental lab stuff, which students have found to be extremely helpful, there's other ways for you to get the same information. And um, where I take the pictures from, like uh, for the next couple of lab practicals after the first one, um, a lot of them are just be models, um, whether they're bone models or heart models or, or whatever it is. And those are the same models that we use in class. Um, for the pictures that I use, I will tell you um, which picture set I will be pulling from. So you'll have an, a very focused way to, to study. During a lab practical, don't touch anything during lab. Don't touch a model. Don't write on anything at the practical station. Um, I don't usually use microscopes, but if I were to use a microscope, do not touch that microscope. If I catch you doing of these thing, any of these things, then you will lose five points from your overall practical score. The reason being is that when you pick up a model and the tape falls off of it, and you just slap it back on someplace, I'm not sure if you put it back exactly where I wanted you to put it back because you may not have written the correct answer on your lab practical. Not that I assume that you wouldn't, but you might just be in a haste and you might just slap that sticker wherever and that's not exactly where I wanted it. So then that's not fair to the student behind you and then the student behind them because they're going to put their response in accordance to where you put the tape and not where I put the tape. So please, don't touch anything. If you have a question about something, raise your hand. I'll come over there and you might say, are you pointing to this? Um, and you can just point with your finger or point with your pencil and I'll be more than happy to let you know where exactly it is I'm, that I'm pointing. Please do not take it upon yourself to move tape and definitely don't write any of your own notes on any of the, the clues or any of the um, questions that I have written in the lab practical. So remember there are no makeup um, lab practicals, um, makeup lecture tests, you can drop your lowest test grade. So um, that's where we do makeups. That's kind of our makeup sort of thing that you can take the final to replace a lecture exam grade. But for lab practicals, we don't have that type of flexibility worked into the schedule. And this Santa Marketplace. So don't hack over your grades. If you have a question regarding specific questions or answers, um, I'll have the keys to the, your lab practicals in my office. You can come visit them at any time during office hours. If you believe that I made a an er error grading in your favor, I don't want to hear about it. So just consider it your reward. If you think there's a, been a grading error that's not in your favor, just simply write on your, your lab practical um, number 15, please regrade um, or look at that um, and I'll definitely have a look at it. So examples of this would be if you have number 15 as simple squamous epithelium and then your neighbor has number 15 as simple squamous epithelium and your neighbor got it wrong but you got it right and then when you look at someone else and everyone else says oh no that's actually adipose tissue um, then you actually I, that somehow slipped behind beside me. Rarely does it happen, but that just is a, a case where it slipped behind beside me. Now for your neighbor that got it wrong, that answer is still incorrect. So you can't come to me and say, well, Susie over here wrote the same thing I got and she got it right, but the correct answer is adipose tissue, so can you just give me this point? No, that's where the whole haggling thing comes in. So if it is the case that um, you've looked at the keys and you see that the answer is in fact simple squamous epithelium, just using it as an example, um, and you have written simple squamous epithelium, but I didn't give you credit for that, then by all means, write regrade the number on there and I will have a look at it. 
So once the lecture lab door is closed on the exam day, the exam has begun, you are not permitted to enter, nor are you permitted to leave. If you have to leave because of an emergency, then you need to submit um, your exam for grading. Um, reason being is that it's just too easy to go outside and go look at your notes real quick, um, to go look at um, any other your other resources to try to figure out like oh I'm really stumped on number 15 um, I, I know what it is I just can't think of what it is if I just go look at my notes real quick so even bathroom breaks I cannot if you're going to leave you have to um, give me your exam for grading because once again it's just not fair to your classmates for you to have that edge um, we've already talked about this spelling counts if spelling is kind of a problem for you then you want to write down that term as many times as you need to sometimes even 25 times on a sheet of paper just like you did when you were learning how to spell different words that you just want to write them over and over and over and over and over and over again if you can't see it ask me sometimes you just can't find that stupid little piece of tape sometimes it's on the back side of it and I already told you guys don't touch the models so you don't want to touch a model you don't want to flip it over um just raise your hand and I will come over and I will flip it over so that you can see what it is or I can point out exactly where that tape is and I pity the fools. So when I take time out to explain something during lab time, this is like the leprechaun's pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So that means that this is something that it's, I find to be very important and something that you need to specifically make sure that you pay special attention to. So as a rule of thumb, when I speak during lab, you wanna grab a piece of paper and a pen and note what I talk about during that discussion because there's a very good chance, and a lot of times I will even preface it, that you may see this on an upcoming lab exam. There's a very good chance that you will see it and be um, tested on it later. And finally, I absolutely want you to succeed. And I know that you can succeed by preparing, showing up, asking questions, and just spending a lot of time with the material. If you've never taken a practical exam, they can be a little nerve wracking, especially when you see the timer that's going on in the front of the room. I put a big timer on the overhead projector so you can see how much time you have at each station. I put a lot of time, thought, and effort into setting these up and preparing them. Um, so I understand how um, huge this can be. Um, for your lab practicals, because I uh, it takes me a while to set it up and sometimes the room is filled that I want you to come about 30 minutes later than your normal lab time. Um, if you want to come at the normal lab time and then just kind of hang out until I open up the doors, you're more than welcome to do so. Sometimes I can kind of get those lab practicals set up really quickly in less than that 30 minutes time um, and if that's the case then I will open the doors up and I'll let students come in. However, at 30 minutes later than your normal lab time, I will be closing the door. So it would behoove you to be outside of the door in our normal lab meeting area, just not in the room, waiting for me to open the door for you. So you have about 50 minutes to show me what you know and to really wow me because I know you guys have been really working hard and studying this material and I know you're gonna be success successful. And all things feel a little awkward the first time you try them. So the first time you come into a lab practical, it might feel a little bit like this cute little cat walking in socks. Um, but with practice, things will get better. All right. That's all I have for you guys. And I will see you all in lab.